Genshin Impact, Arknights, Blue Archive, and Honkai Impact. These four games are each extremely well known and titans within their own respective areas, each having wide and far reaching influence on the games around them, yet each and every one of these games differ dramatically in one singular aspect, the community. No matter how good or how cohesive a game's experience is, its success and its failure is based solely off the community's response to it. Whether it develops a good long term fan base or ultimately fades into obscurity is incredibly dependent on the perception and the initial reactions of those who first played it. For YouTube videos, the first 24 hours are generally the most important. They determine the momentum that the video gains, its chance of success, and while I'm aware that there are fringe cases in which videos skyrocket after long periods of inactivity, those are too few and far between. It's why you see so many creators keen on a video's initial performance as opposed to long term growth. For video games, it's arguably a similar situation. The timing, reaction, and hype are all incredibly important factors in determining the success of a release. We've seen companies such as CD Projekt Red grow from general obscurity into the absolute heights of gaming from run release such as The Witcher 3 to an extent to where their next game is heavily weighted upon and hyped up for years to come. And we've subsequently also seen the opposite of that wherein a company can fall into general obscurity and negative viewpoint due to that same release, also followed by the same company with their release of Cyberpunk 2077. They represent a prime example as to how the hype can also be a negative aspect of the game's development and external factors can subsequently bring more people into the game itself. Yet above all else, for continued development, success, and growth, every game needs both an active and thriving community, and obtaining that is harder than you think. Today, we're going to take a look at Arknights, its continued growth and success, and why its community is among the best in terms of satisfaction and the more welcoming to new players. My name's Anaki. If you find yourself enjoying the video, leave a like down below, consider subscribing and heading to the Discord server, and let's talk about Arknights. I've made numerous videos on Arknights on this channel before and just going through my own personal videos, the like to dislike ratio on them are all pretty consistently high, which I am appreciative of, thank you very much. But Arknights is an interesting community. The game itself isn't necessarily brand new, it didn't come out last year or this year. However, it subsequently has a much more dedicated fan base and if you're looking at many examples, whether they be on YouTube with the extensive guides and amount of resources individuals have if they're just getting into the game, or if you're looking at the general servers, whether they be the Arknights official server, the Arknights subreddit, or even my own personal Discord server, link in the description down below, the players that are knowledgeable are much more inclined to be far more helpful to individuals who are just getting into the game or maybe confused on different concepts. Now, I'm aware this doesn't necessarily come from a developer standpoint. This is much more of a person to person thing and you could have a large and thriving community, but also one that is incredibly rejective towards individuals who are just getting into the game. So I won't focus too heavily on that, but I do think it's incredibly important for veteran players and newer players to be able to interact and help each other. Arknights doesn't necessarily have a chat function in game. It doesn't have a global chat similar to games like Azure Lane, nor does it have a friends chat similar to something like Genshin Impact. This subsequently means that a lot of the individual resources you're finding are outside of the game itself, considering you can't ask anyone directly, although you can borrow support units. On one hand, this may make it more difficult for individuals to connect with one another within the game itself. On the other, it does subsequently force individuals or at least push them towards an idea of interacting with one another outside of the game, whether that be on Discord, the Reddit, or so on. It's a double-edged sword, and I personally enjoy it. But if we're talking about what the developer themselves has done, it's actually quite an interesting thing. Most developers can have different events or different sorts of posts and social media profiles that dramatically change the community perception of them. Whether they're introducing new events and new characters constantly, interacting directly with the community in terms of replies on Twitter, posting numerous events related to in-game activities, whether they be birthdays for characters or different sorts of media like that, could dramatically impact the way that the community themselves will view that company or that game. And in most cases, it can actually be a pretty good benefit. Arknets, however, doesn't necessarily do that, at least not to the same extent as other companies. Instead, what I think the individual players of Arknights value quite a lot is the consistent quality. It's much more difficult to pump out consistent and high quality content all the time. Yet Arknights and the subsequent events, the new characters, the new outfits, all keep up with that theme. Whether they be the amazing music that you've currently been hearing in the background, or the amazing art that you see pretty much everywhere, including the thumbnail for these videos, the current characters that are all pretty decent and have wonderful designs. Ultimately, Arknights is one of the more consistent gacha games out there. The quality is always high, the bar is set pretty high, and players learn to expect that, and subsequently, they usually get it. And so one of the reasons that the Arknights community is so satisfied, and is so welcoming, and is so happy with their game is that because they are getting consistent quality, they don't necessarily have too much to complain about. This isn't saying that the game 
is perfect. I want to clarify that this is not saying that the game does not have flaws. This is instead saying that the game has consistent quality enough to an extent to where players aren't complaining about a bad event or a bad character or anything like that. But the ability to expect consistent quality from a company is an incredibly important thing and the ability for said company to meet that bar is also extremely unique. Alongside this, you also have introductions, not only new events which occasionally, for limited banners at least, also give out a free daily roll, which is a nice addition, but subsequently if you're a new player and you start, you get the selector tickets for a 5 star. You get 2 actually, which is extremely nice. You also get the ability for the newbie banner, which can and more than likely will award you with a decent unit long term. The characters that the game gives you outright are useful to an extent to where you can clear the game's content with the 3 star lower rarity units. And it creates a sense where the gacha is in the game, don't get me wrong, and you can roll, but the game isn't necessarily forcing you to an extent to where it's either you roll or you fail. And with the numerous guides out there that adequately help you build your first team, build up your base, and build up different aspects of your account, it's incredibly easy to get started even if you don't choose to use the resources outside of the game or outside of YouTube. The events themselves are good, even if you choose and aren't capable of completing the hardest tier of the events, they usually will give you sometimes either good rewards that you can pick from with the consistent friends you do, or even new characters. You have different factors that play into it from the credit system which inspires and encourages you to interact with your friends from giving them clues to visiting their bases and so on, to the certification shop which allows you to get headhunting permits. Ultimately, the game rewards you for investing your time and the game respects you for that as well and the company does overall. I think one of the big parts for any gacha game especially is the respect it shows to its players. One way or another, when you play a gacha game you're investing something into it, whether it's your time or it's money, it doesn't necessarily matter. Either way you're putting something into it and you want to feel like that is being valued by the company. We've seen the end result of companies choosing to not value their players and respect the investment and time they put into the game. Arkhamness has done the opposite and we see the end result, a consistent player base that actively chooses to continue playing the game, chooses to introduce new players and help them get into the game, and continues to roll for new characters. Arcanist has an end game. Even if you choose to invest a bunch of time and effort into the game, there's still difficult content that you can choose to clear, and every unit to an extent is valuable. You're not just set on building 4 characters, or 8 characters, even 12 characters. You can build out a pretty decent roster of units, and at some point or another, many of them will become useful. With differing skills and differing sets of combinations, you can make a pretty decent team with pretty varied units. Ultimately, I understand that it can be incredibly difficult and that your opinion on a game can vary dramatically. Whether you've interacted with that game personally or not, and whether you've only interacted with that community can dramatically alter your perception. I think the biggest factor is what the community and the interactions between the company are. Whether the advertising and social media presence is more important than the game's quality or the actual deliverance of events. How they choose to interact and how the community chooses to interpret that interaction is incredibly important. Ultimately, I think Arcanist has enabled a pretty decent match and balance between good content and good community perception. The company is relatively transparent because if you're a global player, you do have the ability of foresight and can relatively well see and predict what's coming forward compared to alternative games in which you're not necessarily given that option. I think Arknights is a game that exceeds many regards, but I think the community overall is among the most welcoming and helpful ones you can play with, and I do recommend it if you have the time to invest into the game. Don't get me wrong, there's a learning curve, but I do think it's well worth it. Either way, my name's been Anaki once again. If you've enjoyed, leave a like on the video down below, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the notification bell, and join the Discord server for Arknights help, Blue Archive help, Genshin Impact, and so on. Either way, I hope to see you next time, and goodbye.